Okay, in this video I will be discussing order of operations. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to do a little introduction and have you evaluate 4 plus 12 divide 2 times 3 and let's see what you get. So stop the video and then check your answer. Alright, so you may have gotten 24, perhaps 6, or 22. Hopefully not something else, but it is possible. I've gotten lots of answers over the years on this problem. So let's look at it more closely to see what we should get. So first of all, um, we don't just go from left to right. It's not like reading. Um, when we do the order of operations, there is, there is a set way of doing things. Now the other thing is you have a division and a multiplication here and some people think that you always multiply before you divide but that's not actually true. Division and multiplication are equal priority and we always do the one on the left first so you should have divided first. So 12 divided by 2 is 6 so you get 4 plus 6 and then don't forget the times 3. And so the next priority is multiplication. We always multiply before we add or subtract and so this would be uh, 4 plus 18 and so of course that would be 22 if you said 22 you were correct. So it's important that you know the order of operations otherwise you're going to get some wrong answers. Now the good news is if you have a nice calculator you can put all of these expressions into the calculator and they look just like they do on paper and uh, and your calculator should give you a correct answer but you should have some balance here you ought to be able to do some things by hand but also you should be able to do things on the calculator because sometimes the numbers aren't going to be real nice alright so um, some people use PEMDAS to help them remember how to do order of operations now P is for parentheses, E is for exponents, M is for multiplication, D is for division, then we have addition and subtraction. The thing I don't like about PEMDAS is it looks like multiplication comes before division and that's not true, they're actually equals. And the same thing is true with addition and subtraction. They're equal priority and with equals you always work left to right. So I have a different way I like to do this. I, I write it this way. Notice I have parentheses and then exponents below or EXP and then multiplication and division and at the very bottom you have addition and subtraction. Additions and subtractions are always last. There is no respect for addition and subtraction. Now the first thing we look for is parentheses so I always say parentheses are king. We always simplify inside parentheses first. All right, and then we take care of exponents. And then we do multiplications or divisions next. And when we do that, we always work left to right. And then last, but not least, we add or subtract. And again, we work left to right. So let's go ahead and practice. So I've given you seven problems to do. So you can do whichever ones you want. I mean, you may want to do them all right now and then watch the video, or you may want to watch me do a few problems and then do the rest, or try the rest. All right, so let's see how you did. So on number one, the first thing you should do here is the multiplication. We've got five plus two times six. So 2 times 6 is going to be 12. We get 5 plus 12, which is 17. On number 2, we have 16 divided by 2 times 4. So we're going, we got a division and a multiplication. Remember, they're equal priority. We do the one on the left first. So it'll be 16 divided by 2, which is 8, times the 4, and so we get 32. On number 3, we have 5 times the quantity 2 plus 4, and then divided by 3. And so the first thing we do here, the highest priority, 
is to simplify what's in the parentheses. So 2 plus 4 is 6, so we have 5 times 6 divided by 3. So notice again we have a multiplication and a division. We'll do the multiplication uh, first, not because it's multiplication, because division and multiplication are equals, but we're doing the multiplication first because it's on the left. So we have 30 divided by 3, which is 10. On number 4, we have 8 times the quantity 9 minus 6, which is squared. So the first thing we're going to do is simplify what's in the parentheses. So it'll be 8 times 3 squared. And then the next order of operation priority would be exponents. So notice we're going to square the 3 next. So it's going to be 8 times 9. And so our final answer is 72. Now in number 5, you have 8 squared minus 16 divided by 2 squared times 4 minus 3. So first priority is the exponents. We have 8 squared and then 2 squared. So we're going to get 64 minus 16 divided by 4 times 4 minus 3. So the next priority is to do the 16 divided by 4 division. Notice we have division and multiplication. We'll do the one on the left first. So it'll be 64 minus 4, because 16 divided 4 is 4, times 4 minus 3. So next we have a multiplication to do. It's going to be 64 minus 16 minus 3. And then we're going to go from left to right. So we get 64 minus 16, that's 48, minus 3, and that's 45. Now I want you to notice something here. If I did the 16 minus 3 first, this would become 64 minus, and 16 minus 3 is 13. And when we subtract those, we get 51. So we get a different answer. And so you've got to be really careful that you do things from left to right, even with subtraction. Um, it's not as important with addition or multiplication, but especially with subtraction and division, you've got to be careful. All right, let's look at number 6. We have 20 minus 2 times the quantity 5 minus 3, which is cubed. And so the highest priority is to simplify inside the parentheses. So we'll combine the 5 minus 3. So we have 20 minus 2 times the quantity 2 to the third power. And then uh, the exponent goes next. So it'll be 20 minus 2 times 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And we have uh, a multiplication to do next. So it would be 20 minus 16 which is 4. Alright, so on number 3 we actually have parentheses within parentheses. Uh, the brackets are really just another way to write parentheses, but when you have parentheses within parentheses, the brackets just kind of make things stand out a little bit better. So we're going to start on, with these types of problems we work inside out, so we're going to start with the innermost parenthesis and simplify the 11 minus 3 here. So we're going to end up with 3 and then bracket 4 plus 2 times 8 end of bracket. And so inside the parentheses we still have some simplifying to do. Uh, we're going to want to multiply next and so we get 3 times 4 plus 16 or 3 times 20 which is 60. All right, so you'll notice in all of the problems we did so far, there were no negatives. Let's go ahead and do some more work. We're, we're going to do a little more variety, but we're going to also be working with some negative numbers. Oh, before we do that, again, I want to remind you, you should be able to do these by hand or by uh, using a calculator you should be able to put it into your calculator so that it looks just like it does on paper or on the screen. Okay, 
So again, I would encourage you to do all the problems that you can here and then um, check the answers. All right, so on number one, you have, your, you have division by an, a zero, and so that's undefined. On number two, you've got negative three squared plus negative four squared. But again, uh, the, the negative three, there's no parentheses. The uh, negative four, there is parentheses. And so for the first part, we have the base is just the three. And for the second uh, exponential expression, the base is negative four. And so negative three squared is negative in parentheses, 3 times 3, and then it'll be plus negative 4 times negative 4. So again, hopefully you can see the difference there. So we end up with negative 9 plus 16, which is 7. Um, on number 8, we have negative 1 to the fifth power, so we're multiplying 5 negative 1s. So basically what we can do is pair up each pair, and since our exponent is odd, there's going to be an odd man out. Of course, a negative times a negative is a positive, and so we end up with a negative answer in this case, because the odd one out is going to make your answer negative. And so this is just negative 1. If you had negative 1 to the 6th power, or any other even power, you would have a positive answer. Any odd power, you would have a negative answer. All right, on number 4, we have negative parenthesis negative 5 or the opposite of negative 5. Well, the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5, or you could think of this as negative 1 times negative 5. A negative out front can always be written as negative 1. So on number 5, you have um, negative, the absolute value of negative 5. Well, the first thing you should do here is simplify the absolute value. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5, and so we have negative 5. Notice the negative out front had nothing to do with absolute value. It's just once we find the absolute value of negative 5, which was 5, we're going to have a negative in front of it. So I want you to notice you've got to be careful. There's a little expression going around that people say two negatives make a positive. Well, that's not true in a lot of cases. It depends on what you're doing. So just be careful with that expression. All right, on number 6, you have negative 3 plus negative 2 times 4. So in this case, we multiply the negative 2 times 4 first. So we're going to get negative 3 plus negative 8. And that would be negative 11. On number 7, we have negative 8 minus 3 times negative 2. So we're going to do the multiplication first. Now be careful here, we have negative 8 minus, and then we're multiplying 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Well, subtracting negative 6 is the same as adding positive 6. We get negative 8 plus 6, which is negative 2. Now, if you look back up here, some people treat this as negative 3 times negative 2, and that would end up being plus a positive 6, or just plus 6. And so you could go directly from here to here. Either way is fine. All right, number eight. Notice we're going to take care of our exponents first. So we have four times negative five squared. Well, negative five times negative five is 25, so that's four times 25. Minus, and it's six times negative three squared. So it'll be minus six times nine, since negative three squared is nine. Next, we'll multiply. We got 4 times 25 and 6 times 9. So we're going to get 100 minus 54, which is 46. All right, on the last problem here, we have a negative 2 times the absolute value of 90 minus the quantity negative 22 minus 36. So the first thing we want to do is simplify everything inside absolute value. Now, absolute value is a grouping symbol just like parentheses. And so we want to take care of what's inside the absolute value first. And the first thing we want to do is work in the parentheses 
inside the absolute value. So negative 22 minus 36, we're going to end up with negative 2 times the absolute value of 90 minus negative 58. So here we're subtracting a negative inside the absolute value. We're going to get 90 plus 58. So we end up with negative 2 times 148, or the absolute value of 148. Of course, the absolute value of 148 is 148, and that's times negative 2. And so you can multiply that out, and you get negative 296. And that's a place where I would use my calculator. Now, if you're using a graphing calculator to do number 9 and put it into a calculator, Remember, you have to hit the math button to get to the absolute value um, option. And so that's how you would put that into your calculator. You might want to try that out. All right, so I think that's all I have for you on order of operations.